I'm Pastor Brenda, really glad to meet you here in this space. Let's continue on in this series on heaven. I have more scripture-based big ideas to share with you. Remember, we're all created for a person and a place. Jesus is the person and heaven is the place. We know this in our created souls. We are created for the eternal, we are created for the sacred, and we are created to not die. So I did a read through of Revelations 20, chapters 20 through 22, and I made this list of what is no more in heaven. So this is just what is no more. It says, um, no more death, no more Satan and his minions. And I love that my Bible translation said minions. No more paradise heaven. We talked about that the week before. No more broken earth. We talked about that the week before. No more death or sorrow, crying or pain. 21 1 mentions a sea being gone. And I thought, I'm pretty sure there's water in heaven and we will be able to surf and enjoy the beach. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's water in heaven. But then I thought about this, um, the Bible project does this whole um, teaching on how the sea is symbolic for chaos. And they, they teach it from the beginning with the creation and out of the sea, out of the sea of chaos, creation was and creation was ordered out of that sea of chaos. And if you carry that through to just other, like the Red Sea, and then Jesus calming the storm out in the sea, and you think about the chaos that the sea represents and Jesus calmed the storm, all of a sudden that story's got this huge double meaning or Peter walking on water has huge double meaning. So I am going to believe that when it says that the, the sea being gone, it's, a sim, it's the sea that's symbolic for chaos. And in the new heaven, the new earth, the chaos will be gone. Doesn't that make sense? Um, there will be no more temple because the temple is here for this earth where, where the heaven and earth come together. That's where the temple worship was. Um, we have an Eden, no temple here, um, temple here, new heaven and new earth. Of course, there's no need for a temple because we are with God like we were in Eden and even, you know, even more so with the completion of God's creation. I had also said, um, the sun and the moon for the glory of God illuminates the city and the lamb is its light. The sun and the moon do get to go with us into the new heaven and new earth. Again, it's in the creation, it's in this created earth and in, I mean, this is the Garden of Eden, this created earth and the new heaven and new earth will have the sun and the moon. But it also says this about night. Chapter 21, verse 5, its gates will never be closed at the end of the day because there is no night there. 22, 5, and there will be no night. There are no need for lamps or sun for the Lord God will shine on them. So I think, I think with the sun and the moon will stay. It makes sense because they're in the three created places. There's that through line for all of that. But night will be different. Um, you know, and there are times, you know, you've seen that when the sun and the moon are visible together. But I think night's going to be just a tad different than what we're used to now because we get the glory. No longer hidden, but we get the glory. And that seems to be lighting up the city. It, it mentions a list of um, people who will not be in heaven. This is an interesting, interesting list of what made the cut. There will be no cowards, unbelievers the corrupt, the murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshipers, and all liars. These guys won't be in heaven. These guys, I don't mean that as men. These people will not be in heaven. There will be no liars in heaven. I would love a conversation on why those things made the list, but there it is. And there'll be no evil, and there'll be no more curse. In heaven, we will have bodies. We will, we will have bodies. It's very clear. 2 Corinthians 5, 3, for we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. Revelation 7, 9, after this, I saw a vast crowd too great to count 
from every nation and tribe and people and language. Look at all that. Standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. Look, bodies. Bodies of every nation and every tribe and every people and every language. Our racial identities are going to continue into heaven. Created in Eden, here on earth new heaven and new earth we're going to be beautiful hues of many many people we'll be healthy and attractive untouched by the curse which brought about disease and restrictions so i say for all of us boomer people no more arthritis Woohoo! we'll be back to our pure and original beauty in the bodies god ordained for us to live in in the first place before the curse Jesus' body was resurrected. I mean, he, is, he died and his body was resurrected. One of those RE words. His body was not replaced. That would be considered reincarnation. Going back to the week before, the Greek words of N-E-U-E, new, and kainen. So Jesus' body was resurrected in heaven. When he was, met the disciples on the road to Emmaus, he didn't hover over the road. He actually walked on the road with his body. When Mary saw him right after the resurrection, Mary thought he was a gardener, very much a body, very much an average looking body. No glow, no heart beating, glowing like in some of the paintings of the Renaissance era. He was just a gardener. What a beautiful thought. And when the disciples saw him starting a fire, and they were grilling fish together. He wanted to eat. He wanted to fill his body and he liked to eat. And I want you to notice a trend here about food and heaven as we start with this point. Philippians 3.21 says, He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. We will be our unique selves in heaven with our original beauty. When Jesus resurrected body, he was himself. Luke 24, 39 says, look at me, look at my hands, look at my feet. You can see that it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I am not a ghost because ghosts don't have bodies as you see that I do. And you read on to, Rev to John 20, all those appearances to, to people, He's very much in a body form and he draws attention that he's in his body. In heaven, we will be renewed to our youthfulness. Psalm 103, 4 through 5 says, He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. Now this is out of Psalms, so this could be metaphorical or could be true. Isaiah 66, 22. Surely as my new heavens and earth will remain, so will you always be my people with a name that will not ever disappear, says the Lord. Your name will not disappear because who else would you be in heaven? Because Jesus died for you to be in heaven. Luke 15, 7 says, In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. These crowd of witnesses that are watching us are watching you make that decision to have Jesus as your Savior. It's, you're not generic. You're not anonymous. They're celebrating you, your identity that you're going to take with you into heaven. Jesus died for you. You are separate in God's eyes. Matthew 8, 11, and I tell you this, that many Gentiles will come from all over the world, from the east and the west, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast, more food, in the kingdom of heaven. Can you see that we'll be sitting and eating next to individuals who will have names and thus have their own backstory? So here's your first conversation question for the night. Um, I hope you're meeting with your small group or your family doing this as a family devotion. Have, um, have this conversation with people you love. This is a fun question. What 
will that dinner conversation be like? You are free to daydream like crazy on this one. What will those conversations be about? Who will they be with? Daydream. All right here, right here. Hit pause. All right, more about heaven. We will pursue and we will develop relationships. Too often we think of heaven in individualistic terms. It's like, I have accepted Christ and I'm going to die and I'm going to go be with God and then go live in my mansion. But heaven will be full of people who will be with you. And the introverts just went, mm, do I want this? Yes, you do. There's space. Heaven is big. You're going to have space. You're going to be with so many wonderful people. And conversations are going to be very much a part of heaven. I think that's why we do conversations at our church when we meet together on Friday nights. Just preparing everybody for heaven to have even more conversations. So you're going to get to hang around with friends you only have through social media. You'll get to hang around with people who have influenced you as a young Christian. You get to see them again. You'll get to hang with Bible heroes. You get to hang out with heroes and influences of your faith. Maybe some of those from centuries before. Maybe some of those who have died and gone on. For me, one of my heroes of my faith is alive right now. I have yet to meet him in person. It's one of my goals. But that's over. His mind is no longer with him. But in heaven, I get to finally have that conversation. I'm looking forward to that so much. You get to hang out with people who are now in heaven because of the missionaries we support as a church or that you have supported. There are going to be people coming up to me from Botswana because I have been supporting our missionaries, Kevin and Sarah Witt, since Kevin went over there as a young adult. He was a teenager in my youth group before. I'm going to have Botswanians thanking me and wanting to meet me because I was important in Kevin's life. There's a whole conversation. We're going to spend time with martyrs and you get to hear their stories, like all of their stories. Like what were those, their thoughts at the very end? Why did they not back down? Why did they not stay safe? All those questions. We get to ask all of those questions. We get to talk to angels. Remember, angels are angels. Humans are humans. The angels have their own creation, their own identity, their, their own backstory. But we get to talk to angels and see their viewpoint on earth. Won't that be interesting? So to think about it, how can you possibly be bored in heaven when you've got so many conversations to have with so many people? You cannot be bored. In heaven, we're going to be called by our earthly names. Revelation 20, 15, and anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Your name is there. Revelation 21, 27, nothing will be allowed to enter, nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry and dishonesty, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Remember, the God of heaven is of love, mercy, holiness, and justice. Holiness means we have been set apart. We are in Christ. Again, see last week's video. We are in Christ. That means in holiness, there is this book of life. Is your name in it? Because it will be your name in it. God calls people in heaven by their earthly names. Like he said, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And your name. Our names reflect our, individual, our individuality. Distinctive, distinctiveness is all about God's creation. Genericness, blondness, that's all about Satan. He can't create, but he sure likes to make everything seem half, blah, empty. Mm. Distinctiveness, your name, your personality, your whole story, all going to be in heaven. Colossians 3, 1 through 4 says, Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. This is why we're doing this heaven series, because what you look forward to 
will help you get there. And once you see what this great new heaven and new earth is really like, may you look forward to it so that you can make better decisions here on earth. Here on earth, we get crumbs of when heaven and earth come together. We get those moments of awe, those moments of holiness. We've talked about that throughout this series that there are these times where we just know God is real right here in this broken earth. But these are just crumbs of what is to come. It is going to get better. The best days are still ahead of us. And for us Christians, the worst thing that happens to us is a resurrection and eternal life. That's the worst thing. Everything else, it just gets better. So set your mind on the things above and not the things on earth. Make these right decisions so that your name is written down in that book of life. Um, make that choice to have a savior who is not yourself. There's something else I've got to share. This is scripture. I said everything I'm doing is scripture based and I don't quite understand this. So this is your next conversation to have. We also will receive new names which again, I don't truly understand, but I can't deny the scripture. I have four of them for you. Isaiah 62, 2. The nations will see your righteousness. World leaders will be blinded by your glory, and you will be given a new name by the Lord's own mouth. Isaiah 65, 15. Your name will be a curse word among my people, for the sovereign Lord will destroy you and will call his true servants by another name. Revelations 2, 17. Anyone who hears with ears to hear, must listen to the Spirit and understand that he is saying to the church, to everyone who is victorious, I will give some of the manna that has been hidden away in heaven, and I will give to each one a white stone, and on that stone will be engraved a new name that no one understands except the one who receives it. Revelations 3.12, all who are victorious will become pillars in the temple of my God and they will never have to leave it. And I will write on them the name of my God, and they will be citizens in the city of my God. The new Jerusalem then comes down from heaven from my God, and I will write on them my new name. So this is your next conversation question, and it was so good when we did this together live over Zoom on Friday nights. Here you go. Do you want a new name or your old name? Why do you think both are talked about? And what does this mean? I'm going to repeat that. Do you want a new name or your old name? What do you think? Why do you think both are talked about? And what does this all mean? What does having a second new name mean? Have that conversation. I'll be waiting right here. Did you have a good conversation? Does some of this make sense with all the scripture? I hope so. So do you think God is pleased when we enjoy a good meal, a football game, laughter with friends, a bonfire in the backyard, any of these moments? Of course he is. Feasting and food is all about heaven. Um, but we enjoy these things because we are people. We don't enjoy these things because we are sinners. We enjoy them because we are people. And we will still be people when we die and we go to heaven. Some more scriptures for you. Isaiah 25, 6. In Jerusalem, the Lord of heaven's armies will be spread a wonderful feast for all the people of the world. It will be a delicious banquet with clear, well-aged wine and choice meat. In this culture of charcuterie boards, I am picturing this feast of heaven. And it sounds Wonderful. Matthew 8, 11, And I tell you this, that many Gentiles will come from all over the world, from east and west, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. In Revelation 19, 9, And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. There's an invitation waiting for you. And he added, These are true words that come from from God, this feast you were invited to. 
And then there's these verses in Revelation 21, 1 through 2 that I got a lot of thoughts about. But we're going to have these bodies in heaven, right? And these bodies in heaven are going to come from our backstories, our nationalities, our skin colors, the stories that share with that. And so also the pain of that, the sin of systemic racism will need to be healed in heaven. Again, the God of heaven is love, mercy, holiness, and justice. There will be people who are going to have to heal from their racism that they have suffered from. Some have been martyred for. So I'm going to read you some verses about this beautiful picture. Revelation 21, 1 through 2. Then the angel showed me a river with the water of life, clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb of the Lamb. It flowed down the center of the main street. On each side of the river grew a tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit with a fresh crop each month. The leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. This river of life, and the trees planted alongside this river of life. Now think, you've heard about this river of life and the trees in the Garden of Eden. In Psalm 1 and Jeremiah 17, we read about this same type of river of life and how what grows beside there, these trees and oaks of righteousness. And here in the new heaven, the new earth, again, this river of life and on the trees is the fruit that is going to heal the nations. Finally, there will be justice for the wrong things done because of your ethnicity, your skin color, your poverty, all these things that you have been shamed for. There will be healing and it comes right from that river of life, from those, that tree of life that is growing the very fruit that is going to heal you. That is a really big thought. And one more really big thought that will serve as our benediction. There will be earthly things that are going to, that are going to be going with us into these heavenly places. One of those is our good works. Again, we are saved by grace. We are saved when we make a decision to trust a Savior who is not us. And as we say often in our church here, from that point, we are then maturing into who we already are. And this maturing, then we start living like Jesus. We start doing good works. We already have access. We're already written into the book of life. But we start maturing into who we already are, which means we then do these good works and they come with us into heaven. Revelation 14, 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this down. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit. They are blessed indeed, for they will rest from their hard work, for their good deeds follow them. So what kind of life are you living here? What kind of deeds are going to follow you into heaven? Now, there's no liars. There's no idolaters. There's no immoral people. So I'm not talking about that part. We're talking about the who of you as a lover and follower of Jesus. Who are you going to be that begins now that you can take into your story into heaven? That's your benediction. May this be your challenge. There's a lot to be wowed about and awed about and grateful for to set our minds on heaven. And may that help you make the better decisions now so that these stories come with you. Please, in the name of Jesus, amen.